So it's not uh, the, the, the theme, um, it seems to stand out from this passage, this part of Acts of the Apostle, as we studied the Acts of the Apostle, is that people are not worthy of eternal life, that unbelievers are not worthy of eternal life. And there are, I have five things to say, uh, just from Acts 13, 42 to Acts 14, verse 7. And the first thing is this, when the gospel is received, people must be urged to continue in the grace of God. Verses 42 to 43, let's read this together. As they were leaving, the people urged them to speak about these matters following Sabbath. After the synagogue had been dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts of Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas who were speaking with them and urging them to continue in the grace of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. So, so this is the first um, missionary journey of Paul, Rakfonong from Isnare. He is in a place called Antioch in Pisidia, and he's preaching, and people are believing in him, and they want him to come again and to speak uh, the word of God to them. But here we are told that after the service, uh, after the, the synagogue had been dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism, so many of the religious people who were sitting in church today, they followed Paul and Barnabas, and so they were speaking with them, encouraging them, urging them to continue in the grace of God. Now, um, friends, it's very important for us as Christians. If you're a Christian, we must continue on in the grace of God in our lives. Because if, you, if, if you're not building your life in the grace of God, you're not building your life in the love of God, but you're building your life on your own goodness and your own rights, because that's the other alternative, then eventually you, you will doubt yourself. You will never have any assurance of eternal life. But we build ourselves in the grace and the love of God because it's the only foundation in our lives, Christian lives, that could give us assurance of eternal life. It gives us hope that we will escape God's judgment. And so uh, Paul says to us in Romans 5 that we even boast, uh, in other words, we even rejoice in our afflictions, even our sufferings, because we know that afflictions help us to keep on growing. See, why is it, why is affliction help us to keep, keep on growing, uh, grow through in endurance and character and hope? It's because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So when we receive the gospel, the Holy Spirit comes through the love of God and poured into our heart. And, you know, um, and one of the problems of us being Christians is that we may be Christian for a very long time, but the love of God is, is still head knowledge. It hasn't come down from our head into our heart. We need the Holy Spirit. This is why we pray at the beginning of every service that the Holy Spirit be poured out into us, in us as a congregation so that the word of God may be applied into our hearts, so that we don't just come and listen and then go away and, and, and live the same sort of thing, but that our lives are changed. See, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And it is this love of God that, that tells us, that assures us that our sins have been forgiven. It is the Holy Spirit that testifies into our hearts. So the Holy Spirit poured the love of God into our hearts and gives us, gives us hope that we look forward to eternal life. The second thing is this, that when the gospel is contradicted, it shows people are unworthy of eternal life. Uh, verses 44 to 48 together. The following Sabbath, almost the whole town assembled to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to contradict what Paul was saying, insulting him. Paul and Barnabas boldly replied, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. We are turning to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they rejoiced and honored the word of the Lord, and all who had been appointed to eternal life believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you see here there are always two responses to the gospel, even here in, in, uh, in our church. As I'm preaching, 
As Alec has been preaching, there's always two kinds of people. You're divided into two kinds of people. See? Those who reject the word of God and therefore you show that you are unworthy of eternal life. And on the other hand, all who had been appointed to eternal life, if you're a person who's been appointed by God to eternal life, you will find that you're, you're being appointed by God. You know that you've been appointed by God. You've been elected by God to receive eternal life because you will believe. The unbelievers... Those who just come to church and listen and go away and, and, and live the same so that they show themselves to be unworthy of eternal life. But you see, that the, the, the way in which the people reject the, the gospel is through contradicting what Paul says, contradicting what the Word of God says. See, and even today, there's still people who are contradicting uh, the teaching of Paul and therefore show that they are totally unworthy of eternal life like this right uh, you know this, this is what Paul says don't you know that uh, unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom do not be deceived no sexually immoral people idolaters adulterers or male with sex with males as homosexuality no thieves greedy people drunkards verbally abusive people or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God see homosexuality will not inherit the kingdom of God and that is contradicted by the church today because people are saying no, the, the churches are saying no, homosexuality is okay. See, they keep on contradicting the teaching of Paul, showing that they are totally, those churches are totally unworthy, unworthy of eternal life. Not only that, the teaching on homosexuality, but also his teaching about the authority uh, and, and of men and, and women in church. A woman is to learn quietly with full submission. I do not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. Instead, she is to remain quiet, for Adam was formed first and Eve. Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and transgressed. See, he doesn't allow women to preach or be ministers, faithful in the church of God. But it's totally contradicted by people today, by churches today. Methodist church, for example, Sa'utata, for example. So they show themselves by contradicting the teaching of Paul, those people in those churches, they show themselves to be truly unworthy of eternal life. And it is my hope that we here will always sit under the teachings of Paul in this case, right? that the women in our church will always be happy to learn with quietness and full submission and they would support the, the men to step up and lead, not only here in church, but also in your families. But not only that, but also the, the, the wearing of head covering. See, I want you to know that Christ is the head of every man. The man is the head of the woman. So there's headship in church. When you come to church, God is the head of the church. God under, uh, under God is Christ. Under Christ is the men. Under the men is the women. So there is this hierarchy in church. So there is this hierarchy, and therefore, how do we show this hierarchy that, that, that that's what happened in the church of God? By the men not wearing head covering, see? And the women wearing head covering. See, because they uncover their head, if, if the women uncover their heads, they are dishonoring their head, the men and Christ and God. You see? But this is one of the teachings, also one of the teachings of Paul that has been contradicted in the church of God today. And it is our prayer that women everywhere who call themselves Christian will come and submit themselves to this. But you see, I brought these three things in to show you that still today people are still contradicting the teaching of Paul, showing how truly unworthy they are of the word of God. And if you're sitting here, if you're a woman, if you're, or if you're a man, and you do not believe in these teachings I'm very sorry for you but it shows that you have not been appointed by God for eternal life see we are all elected by God either to receive eternal life or to receive eternal condemnation how do you know that you are elected to receive eternal life you will believe the word of God you will receive it you will submit to it and you will show that you are worthy of eternal life. Uh, so, so yeah, people began to contradict Paul. So number three, when the gospel messengers are expelled from a place, it's a confirmation of God's judgment. Let's read this together. 
The word of the Lord spread through the whole region, but the Jews incited the prominent God-fearing women and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, expelled them from the district. But Paul and Barnabas shook the dust off their feet against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy, the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. And so that the, the, the messengers of the gospel, Paul and Barnabas, are eventually expelled from Antioch. See, the, the, the God-fearing women. So this is the religious people, right? So this would be a warning for all of us who come to church every day. The, the unbelieving religious people is the unbelieving Jews. The Jews were the people who sat there in church every Sunday, listened to the word of God being read, being prayed, being pro uh, proclaimed, and, and they sing to the Lord, they sing the Psalms and everything. But they are the people who are unbelieving. They're the people who are stirring up uh, people to persecute and eventually to expel Paul and Barnabas. But you see what Paul and Barnabas did? They shook the dust off their feet against them. So when the gospel is expelled, when the gospel is rejected, when people do not see it worthwhile to believe the gospel, their condemnation in the judgment of God is already sealed, right? Because you see, they shook the dust of the feet, uh, and, and that's what Jesus said. If anyone does not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment, so there is a day of judgment, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But you see, you know, the, the dust is shake off the feet when you leave the house because it means on the day of judgment, those who have rejected the gospel will not escape God's anger. It is our prayer that none of the people who are sitting here on a Sunday in, Sunday out, will just sit here and go to hell. None of those people who, of you who are sitting here listening to this message, listening to us, Aleki, those of us who are preaching, and eventually go home and still rejecting the gospel. This is my prayer. I have a whole list of people that I recognize in our church whose life does seem to me to still be rejecting the gospel. It is my prayer that the Lord will sanctify his great name on those men and women in our church. So they may be saved. You know who you are. You sit there tonight, today and you know who you are. Those people who are rejecting this word. You're not receiving. You're not submitting to the word of God. You know what you're meant to be doing, but you're not doing it. Just come to church every Sunday just to tick the box. But on the day of judgment, there is a day of judgment. And you cannot escape. See, because this preaching, this pulpit, would secure for you your condemnation. So I hope that the dust of our feet will not have to be shaken off here because a lot of people in our congregation just sitting here rejecting the same message that we are preaching. Number four, when people's minds are poisoned against us, we must continue to speak for the Lord boldly. Let's read this together. In Iconium, they entered the Jewish synagogue as usual, spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So they stayed there a long time and spoke boldly for the Lord, who testified to the message of the grace by enabling them to do signs and wonders. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you see, uh, there is a sense in which unbelieving people, not only out there, but even here in church. See, unbelieving people, if you're an unbeliever, you are the person most likely to poison other people about this ministry. 
Kapau kita tahu kau ke nafas tu kita itu ikhlas ngawi kau ini fufu lah tua. Kau kau ia engari engari teke fakah covid fakah konahi atau mai kakai ikhlas ngawi kau ini fai kau malanga egosperi. Siapa mahu kita mahu ingat kau kita tahu tu kita fakah tahu mahu tahu tu ikhlas egosperi. Hei kapau kita itu teke hok kau 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 tahu tak hangi kau teke fakah konahi atau mai hok fanau mui kakai ikhlas ngawi kau ini fai kau malanga egosperi. Keha covid kata me akah melerai kau tobe fai mehe. And that's what was happening here. Unbelieving Jews, unbelieving religious people stirred up Gentiles, poisoning their minds against the brothers, against the Christians, against the believers, against the apostles. And it does happen in our church, doesn't it? You probably have heard all kinds of poisonous things about me and about, my, about the way in which I lead our church. And I always keep on encouraging you people, speak good words about yourself, about others, about myself, about this ministry, about this church, because this is not my church. This is not my ministry. This is the church of God. This is the ministry that was brought about by the Spirit of God. And he brought us all in. So we should be careful not to speak poisonous things about this. Because... 10, 20 years from now, we'll all be gone and this ministry will continue on because God will be here raising up people to continue preaching the gospel. I go meong mahu ingai ke tektau tol kainga ke owa te ke rea kovi ke tau ngawe o fai. Owa te ke faka kovi e atamaya ka kai ke tau ngawe o fai. Mahe no pe koe ngawe e faka koe faka kovi o fai. Koe ngawe e tota o kuta e tui o kuta utuma o beya si o si o fi be tau mea. Tegang aku sih sih off pe COVID ni aku tahu pe ya kita teko aku aku kehap ke sih sih off engau aku ni. Tegak pe ke ahmi ada lagi muka mai pe tadi tu sih tadi tu 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 tak COVID aku sih COVID ni aku tahu aku. So we're told in Hebrews that this thing, you know, how do we respond to these sort of things? You know, and people's mind are poisoned against us. We must continue on to speak the word of God, and that's what happened when the gospel first went out into the world. Right? Salvation had its beginning, was spoken by the Lord, confirmed by those who heard him, the apostles. And God testified by signs and wonders, various miracles. You know, pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see the miracles of God. There are so many miracles happening in our midst. From the word of God being proclaimed, our lives being changed, your lives being changed. That is a great miracle of God. Right? Because every time the gospel is proclaimed, miracles happen. God is at work. God is there. And he works. He brings about... Do you know, even uh, you young people, today the, the world around us is poisoned against us Christian. We have become the bad people, the bad guys. This is a book written by one of the elders of our, one of our, our churches, FIC judges, a guy called Steve McAlbine. Let me read to you this quotation. Increasingly, Christianity is viewed as the bad guy. Christianity is no longer an option, it's a problem. The number of those professing faith has fallen dramatically. There are not many Christians out there in the world. The number of those who reject the faith they held until late teens has risen dramatically. We are on the wrong side of history, the wrong side of so many issues and conversations. We don't like it. We don't feel like we deserve it. But we are the bad guys now. See, in other words, the culture is being poisoned against us Christians. Because every time we disagree with what the culture stands for, you know, for example, in the homosexual issue and that sort, we disagree with them, we are regarded as people who speak hatred against that. Because we disagree with those, and that's what he, he's talking about. We don't, we don't like it, we don't like that people think that we're the bad guys, but we are because the culture is being poisoned against us Christians. It's very hard for us to be Christian today. But what can we do? What can we do? Well, Paul says... It, 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 uh, it, it shows here that they continue to speak boldly of the word of God. See, we will never give up speaking the word of God. 
will continue to speak boldly the word of God because that's the only response we can give the world. And then lastly, when the gospel is rejected, the Lord saves his people and take them away. Now, let's read this together. But the people of the city were divided, some siding with the Jews, others with the apostles. When an attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews, their rulers, to mistreat and stone them, they found out about it and fled to the Laconian towns of Lystra and Derby and to the surrounding countryside. There they continued preaching the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you see that at the end of it, you know, they, they, they went from Antioch to the next town, Iconium, and then the religious, religious people, the Jewish people followed them, persecute them, and an attempt was made to kill them. But they found out about it. How did, they, how did they find out about it? Well, because God looks after his people and rescued them. You know, when Paul explains to Timothy what happened there, this is what he said in 2 Timothy 3. But you followed my teachings, my conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, and endurance, along with persecutions and suffering that came to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. So this is what, he's, this is what we're reading about. Persecutions in Antioch. They went to Iconium, they were persecuted there. They went from there to Lystra and Derby. Persecutions I endured. And then see what Paul says, and yet the Lord rescued me from them all. Whatever it is that this world will throw at us, right? They poison people's mind against us. They will persecute us, they will even expel us. They reject what we are saying, whatever it may be. At the end of the day, the Lord will rescue us and take us safely into his eternal kingdom so therefore we must continue to be committed to speaking boldly of the word of god of the gospel because that's the only hope we have in this world so let's finish off by praying pray that we continue to grow in the grace of god pray that we no longer contradict paul's word but show that we are worthy of eternal life pray that we be rescued from god's judgment pray that we continue to boldly preach god's word in a culture that poisoned their minds against us Pray that we trust God who will rescue us from all kinds of evil. Let's pray.